Good morning and welcome back to this week's episode. I do want to start off by apologizing for not having a video for you last week. Just with everything that has been going on in the world on top of various deadlines, work conflicts, and being out of town, I just wasn't able to create a video last week. But don't worry because today I'm going to make it up to you by going back to the project that started it all and that is the renovation of my walk-in closet. So back when Mark and I were starting to discuss moving in together, we started to talk about the logistics of how that actually could happen. How could two full grown adults with fully furnished homes merge everything into one home? But honestly, I lucked out in the biggest way because other than a few key pieces of furniture that he had in his home, he wasn't tied to anything, meaning that the furniture and all of the stuff that I have loved and collected over the years would be able to be moved in. So one day I said, you know, when I move in here, let's talk about closet space because what I'm seeing right now is not going to work. <laughs> there was a small closet in our master bathroom that was full of all of his clothes and his shoes and there's also a closet a uh, small walk-in closet right off of the master uh, bathroom that also stored all of his clothes and shoes so I was like well how about we take one of the guest bedrooms and I turned that into my full closet and he was like absolutely not. I don't understand how one person could possibly have that many things to fill a whole bedroom and so I was like okay well I could fill it but I get it I get that we don't want to take up a full bedroom for my closet so how about you take the things that are in the walk-in closet and move that to one of the guest bedrooms closets and then I can have that space even though I knew that it wasn't going to be enough space for me at least having that to start with was good enough. So a week or so later, Mark comes with a great suggestion that said, you know what, you know that weird alcove that we have upstairs right outside of the laundry room? What if we busted out the back of the closet in the master bathroom and extended that wall all the way to the wall of the laundry room? And at that moment, I was like, aha, now we're getting somewhere because it would give me a lot of extra space on top of it would give me some natural light because in that weird alcove was a window and I was like absolutely that would be fabulous to do and I think it would be easy and that was the first time that I said I think it would be easy and now we just laugh at it because literally nothing as simple as a project can be nothing comes easy to us but I was like let's give it a try the next week I went out of town for a few days to visit some friends and when I came home this is what I came back to. I was completely shocked because it was definitely something that we had talked about. I just didn't know that we were going to be starting it like right now. And so looking back at it, I was definitely surprised and I thought it was the sweetest gesture just to let me know that he was really serious about me moving in. And not only that, he wanted to make sure that this house also felt like my own home too. So I thought it was super sweet and even though the surprise was amazing, I was a little bummed only because <laughs> I wasn't able to get a before picture for you guys so I have no before picture of what the closet used to look like but then in my reveal later on in the video I will show you where the old closet was and then all of the new space where the current uh, closet is right now. Because building a wall was something that neither of us knew how to do, we decided to hire a contractor to build it for us. We, well, probably more me than we, were adamant on doing everything ourselves for this space. I was just so excited. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I can finally do a DIY project in a home. I've been wanting to do this all my life and I can finally do it and I want to do it myself. But 
realizing that we probably didn't want to mess that up and especially when you're talking about a structure of a home we allowed the professionals to come in and I'm so glad that we did. Can't really see it in the pictures but we had this weird angle in the hallway that we just weren't sure what we were going to do with it. Initially we had thought about doing just a basic rectangle closet which would be fine but we had this angle that it just would have looked odd from the hallway and so we thought why don't we just include that little bit of space take that wall that was going to be um, a rectangle and just pivot it out a little bit to include that angle and I think from the hallway it would look great and then from the inside of the closet it would just maximize the space so we decided to talk to the contractor about it and at first he wasn't into it and this is his attempt of at first trying to tell me no but after some convincing he did come to the conclusion that including that angle into the closet made the most sense and so I'm so glad that we were adamant on including it because without it I would not have been able to include the furniture and some of the decorative items that I wanted to have in that space had it had been a rectangle closet so to make it make more sense, I think at this point, I'm just gonna take you upstairs and do a full reveal of the space and kind of show you around, okay? So how about we get out of here? to my walk-in closet. It looks like me, it smells like me, and I love it so much. So what I thought that I would do is take you on a detailed tour just to show you how we created this space. Additionally, I'll be providing some behind the scenes pictures and videos just to show you how everything came together. I'll be showing you the trials and the errors and a lot of the learnings, much of which we have transferred over to other projects in our home. So I'm really excited to show you around. So let's get started. First up, we tackle the ceiling and the lighting. We just didn't want to deal with scraping off the popcorn on the ceiling, so we decided to take the easy way out and hang shiplap over top. So off to Home Depot we went to pick up some supplies and once we got home, we started hanging the boards right away using these steps. Step one, find and mark the studs in your ceiling. This is key, unless of course you wanna wake up the next morning with shiplap all over your floor. Step two, Measure twice, cut once. Step three, apply wood glue to the back of the shiplap. Step four, attach shiplap to ceiling by nailing directly into studs and repeat. There was a tricky corner that had a stump for days, but after several cutting attempts, we finally figured it out. Next, we added molding to help cover up any imperfections and then also figured out how to make a miter cut using this handy miter box and saw. Once everything was up and the nail holes were covered up with putty, we sanded them and then painted both the ceiling and the walls a crisp white. Next up was the flooring and we decided to go with wood laminate. At first I wanted to go with a darker color, but the more that I thought about it, I really wanted the space to be light and airy, so we went with this gray. The installation was easy-ish. First we had to remove the carpet and all of the nails. Then we laid down the padding, which was super easy, and that's this green that's shown here. And for the most part, after measuring twice and cutting once, we just snapped and clicked the laminate into place. For the floor molding, we went with this wide board and I love it. Once everything was nailed to the wall, of course, directly into the studs, I went around, caulked all of the seams and filled the holes with putty. After that dried, we sanded everything and gave the molding a fresh coat of white paint. 
So now that we had the flooring done, the walls done, the ceiling done, it is now time to get into the fun stuff. So during the thick of the pandemic, it was impossible to get any of these from Ikea. And I guess you have to think about it. Everyone was working from home. Kids were um, doing school online learning from home. And so everyone wanted these in their home offices. And so it was impossible to try to find it. And it took me weeks to be able to find the ones that I did. So it was one morning I got up, I saw that they were available on Ikea and they were av available at the Charlotte store. And so the Charlotte store is like two, two and a half hours away from here. And so I look over to Mark and I'm like, should we go to Charlotte and pick up these bookshelves? And he was like, well, see if you can order them online and then we can just go to customer service and pick them up. And so I tried to do that, but because they were so popular, they wouldn't allow you to do it. The only way that you could get these shelves is if you were at the store. So I looked over to him again and I'm like, you wanna do a road trip to Charlotte? <laughs> so we got in the car, we drove two and a half hours to Charlotte, we get to Ikea, we bust to the back of the store where we think that the bookshelves are and we get there, no bookshelves. They were gone, like literally all gone. You could buy the glass shelves, but you could not buy the bookcases. And to say that I was pissed <laughs> was an understatement, but there was nothing that we could do. Even though they said that they were online, and even though when we called customer service on the way to Ikea, and they said that at that moment they had them, by the time that we actually got there, they were gone. So the only things that we brought home were two fat cinnamon rolls that were darn delicious on the way home. And again, the search continued. So it was probably about a month later, I saw them again online, but this time they allowed you to buy them online. Um, and I said, I'm not driving back out to Charlotte. I'm going to have these delivered. And even though the delivery cost was probably just as much as the cabinets, it was worth it to me to know that they were going to be mine and that in about a week or so they were going to be delivered. So they got here and luckily I am with someone who actually enjoys putting together Ikea furniture. So I let him have it and he put them together and we put them in this space and I just absolutely love it. It is that one thing that when you walk into this space is that your eye goes to immediately. And sometimes I just stand in here and look at it because I really do love it. So I wanted to elevate the doors just a little bit. The doors actually came with just a simple white knob, but I found these matte black um, handles here that just kind of twist and you can open them up and then it locks again. And I just really love those and wanted to use those to elevate uh, the doors a little bit and just to pull in the black that is kind of dispersed throughout the rest of the space. And the amount of joy that it brings me to come in here when I get dressed and just to stare at this place is just, it brings me so much joy. I really do love just having a space where all of my shoes are out in the open and I'm able to see them, nothing is hidden. It just is the most gratifying thing. I really do love it. It was worth the months and months of waiting and driving two and a half hours to Ikea. Um, I just absolutely love it. It is the jewelry of this space for sure. In planning out the space for the closet, I knew that I wanted to ensure that there was room to add a dresser. You should know me by now that I didn't want to add just any old dresser from some big box store. I really wanted something that had some character, but I knew that I wanted to paint it matte black. But let me be clear, I am typically team never ever paint wood, but in this space I knew I wanted it to be black and I preferably wanted it to be vintage. I kept stalking Facebook Marketplace for the right one, but I just didn't see anything that spoke to me until I found this one. 
I love the detail on the sides. I loved the feet, the deep drawers, and the detail around the drawers. And I thought that the two small drawers on top would be great for sunglass storage and jewelry. One thing that I did notice about the dresser is that the wood and the stain were a little beat up. So I knew when I saw that, that I would be okay to paint it. So I reached out to the seller, offered a little lower price than she was asking. She accepted and later that evening we drove out to Raleigh to pick it up. When we brought it home the next day, I then worked to sand down the varnish of the dresser just to rough it up a little bit so that the paint had something to adhere to. And then I found these amazing vintage knobs at a thrift store long ago. I think like maybe two years ago and I've been saving them for a really long time. At the moment I didn't have anywhere to place them but the moment that I saw this dresser I knew immediately that I wanted to use them for those top two drawers. So I filled in the holes from the previous handles and then I drilled a new hole for these beautiful vintage knobs to go onto and I absolutely <laughs> Love it. I also carefully went around and filled in some of the spaces that needed to be repaired with some wood putty and then I sanded everything down until smooth. And then finally, once everything was nice and smooth and ready to go, I went ahead and painted it with this amazing matte black chalk paint from Jolie. I just love, 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 love how this dresser turned out and think that it's the perfect addition to this space. If you've been around for a while, you know that I am a hat collector. So it was very important for me to have space within the closet to display some of my favorites. One day when I was out thrift shopping, I happened to stumble upon these vintage brass hat stands. And the moment I saw them, I knew I had to get them. They were $2 each. Um, they're amazing. I don't know if you can see up there, but they are adjustable so you can adjust the height to whatever you want it to be. And I just love this little space on my dresser to display some of my absolute favorite hats. So this piece is really special to me. My Aunt Bootsy bought this for me um, back when I was in high school and I've had it ever since. I took it to college with me. I've had it at every apartment that I've ever lived in. I've taken it with me to every different city and every different state that I've lived in and always have it on display. It has a, a keyhole here that has the lock, the original lock to it that I keep in a special place that's a, a little secret and um, I keep my favorite jewelry in this piece and I just love it love it so much and I'm really happy that I was able to bring it into this space and then I just added a few other pieces I have this little mirror that I found at a thrift store you can tell that it's old and vintage just what I love I have a picture of me when I was a little kid this uh, picture is of me at our old house actually this is the 688 house and that tree meant everything to me as a kid I was always in that tree me and my friend Steven were probably in that tree every single day and so I just love having just a little piece of my childhood um, here in the space as well um, and then I have this beautiful ribbed brass vase that I found on Etsy. Just put in some dried flowers. Uh, you can tell, if you remember, if you saw my bathroom renovation, this is a little vase that I found at the thrift store that I absolutely loved. And while it was supposed to go into the bathroom, it just didn't fit in there. So I decided to put it here in the window and I just kind of love that. And then I have this little case here that I bought when I was in Charleston and it holds a lot, not all of them, but a lot of my sunglasses. And I really, really love that. Actually, let me show you. I'm gonna take this off where I have my crystals and my sage. And it just holds some of my sunglasses there. So I really love having that piece there just to have it on display. Again, for those that have been around for a while, this cabinet will look pretty familiar to you. And for all you newbies, I used to use this cabinet in my old apartment to store all of my beloved vintage glassware. 
I actually found it at a local thrift store for $20 several years ago. Brought it home, gave it some love. Actually found the original key. I'll show that here. Found the original key. It was actually taped to the bottom of the cabinet, which I absolutely love. But unfortunately, when I moved in with Mark, we just didn't have a place to put this. So I put it into storage and I just knew that eventually one day I would have a place to put it. Um, and then when we designed this closet, then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to use this to store all of my favorite purses. And so I absolutely love, I have like a lot of my clutches and some of my purses that I've just had for years and years and years that I would love to have on display. And so this cabinet is just the perfect addition to this space and I love that I was able to give it yet another life. Every time I travel, I always want to bring something back that I can have for my home. And on my first international trip, I went to Italy, a tour of Italy. And while we were in Venice, I found this bowl. And I don't know if you can see all the different colors that are layered within this bowl, but I just love it. And actually a fun thing is, is we were supposed to take a gondola ride and I was like, you know what, instead of the gondola ride, which I know is fabulous and I would, you know, have that memory forever, I just want to go looking around and shopping around to see what I can bring home. So me and my friend Rosalind um, went shopping and she was just like, I'll skip the gondola ride and come along with you. She's, I swear, my road dog forever. And um, we went into this tiny little shop and the person who was actually making all of this Murano glass was there. I found this bowl and knew that I wanted to bring it home and it's been in every space since. I think I went on that trip like 13 years ago and I still have it and, and love it to this day. I also very much love scents and perfumes and so I found this little tray while out thrift shopping. I don't know it probably was no more than a couple of bucks and I uh, just put it here on this cabinet to store some of my favorite perfumes and I really love that. Also found him at a vintage store. Um, I think he was maybe 20 or 30 bucks but I just really loved the detail of him and so I wanted to put him in this space as well. And then I found this artwork, um, actually found the artist on Instagram during the pandemic. Her name is Amy Lauren and I just really loved her work. I just love the coloring and there was just something about both of these pieces that spoke to me. So I purchased both of the prints, had them framed and I am obsessed with them in this space honestly. So in the old closet, the wall ended here and it went all the way to here. So this window was not a part of the closet. Um, obviously all of this space here was not a part of the original closet. This was all in the hallway. And so this extended amount of space really gave me the opportunity to add in the dresser and the shoe cabinet, which I love. In the old space, there was one long wire rack here for clothes, and then there was a shorter rack here for clothes, only because that door, when it opens, you couldn't have like a big rack behind it, otherwise the door wouldn't open. Um, so there was a shorter one over there, and I just knew that that wasn't gonna be enough space for me. And I also, sorry, did not want those wire racks in my closet. So what we did is we found these black brackets. Um, I think we just got them off of Amazon. We added some wood up top so I had some room for storage of my sweaters. And then we found this wooden dowel. The end caps I believe are from Amazon. And then we added a second shelf down below. And basically I have all of my pants and my skirts down there, all of my shirts, and then dresses uh, down there. And I just really love it. I feel like it kind of gives like a boutique vibe 
and um, I just wanted everything to be on display and to look pretty and I think that I have been able to achieve that um, with these racks that we created. So in every room that I design, I always make sure that I have three elements in the space. And the first element is a statement piece. And I usually call that the jewelry of the space. The one thing in the room that your eye immediately goes to when you walk in. And within this space, I would say it is definitely my shoe cabinet. I think it is just a stunning piece. I think that it is just that one thing when you walk into this closet that you see first. The second element is adding in something feminine, something that will soften up the blacks and the moodier vibes that I typically design with. And in this space, I would definitely say it's the clothes, it's the flowers, it's the shoes, the accessories. Just something that is just going to like give this space a little bit more of a feminine energy. And the last element is adding in a vintage item, something that's going to give your space some character, some personality. And I knew because this space was a little bit more on the modern side that I definitely wanted to add in some of those vintage pieces. So of course we have the dresser, we have the cabinet that I'm storing my purses in, we have a lot of the pieces that are on top of the dresser in terms of um, the vase, the what else did I have, the different trays, the sculpture that's in the back. There's lots of little pieces sprinkled through this closet that gives you that vintage feel and I love it. Learn throughout the course of this project and if I had to pick my top maybe five or six different lessons it would be one I can do hard things. <laughs> Two all things are possible with YouTube. Three measure twice cut once. Four take your time and have fun. I had to tell this to Mark several times. <laughs> I told him, this is not a race, it is a marathon. It cannot be done overnight, it will not be done overnight. This is not a race, it is a marathon. <laughs> um, four, or actually five, is the worst that can happen is that you have to repeat a step. And you might have to repeat a step many times. Do you want to keep going back to Home Depot? No. Do you want to make a million cuts to a one single piece of wood? No. But guess what? On that last cut, you're going to be like, ah, that's how you do it. And then you can take that skill and transfer it to your next project. So once you learn that, you can pretty much accomplish anything. The worst that can happen is that you have to repeat the step. And then the last one is hug your partner, tell them thank you, <laughs> tell them that you appreciate them and that this project wouldn't have been more fun without them. Trust me, it will go a long way. And there we have it, a full tour of the project that started it all. Sometimes I just stand in here honestly and I just stare at it. I really do love it so much and when I do get dressed into something that is more than athleisure wear, it makes you just so much easier because everything is out on display. Things aren't hidden where I can easily forget about them and I just love that I can just be able to come in, see exactly what I have, pick something out easily and be on my way. Um, so yeah, this space is, is just really special to me and I'm actually really, really appreciative to Mark for giving up this closet and then agreeing to expanding it so that I can really have this space of my own and, and I just absolutely love it. So what do you think? I really do hope you enjoyed this tour. I had a lot of fun walking you through this space. If you've made it this far, I urge you before you close out of the video to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and share it all over the world if you want to. And also, I love the comments. I think the, the best part that I love about these YouTube videos are the conversations that we're having down in the comments. So if you liked it, if you didn't like something, if you have a question, if you have a suggestion, leave it down in the comments and I promise you that I will respond back.
So with that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And I will see you next week. Bye. It's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. Love and tradition of the grand design. Some people say it's even harder to find. Well, then there must be some magic clue inside this gym.